We've got a new project on at the minute. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time, but I've always kind of uh, left it because it was the easiest thing to do. And that is a turbo kit uh, and exhaust system for classic minis. Classic minis are what I started out doing. They are like my first love in cars. I've had this blue car, which is my first car. So I've had it, uh, I guess, 14, 15 years now. It is a bit of a shed, this car. It's never had a restoration or anything. It's been painted, it's had different engines, it's had cheap bodges. It's had loads of things, this car, but it has all the history um, that makes it, you know, my first car and there's elements of it I don't want to change. But I do want it electronically fuel injected and with a turbo. So I was speaking with uh, Specialist Components a few weeks ago at the Late Break Show Live, and um, we kind of decided that we should probably do something together, use our fabrication skills and their expertise on tuning very powerful minis. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna make a turbo kit for this car. The first thing to mention is like, there's loads of different choice with turbos on classic minis. The most common ones are like GT15s and GT17s off of like Saabs, Vivaros, random things really, but nobody tends to use genuine ones. Everyone tends to use like Chinese 150 quid jobbies, which I'm sure do the job, but that's not really what I'm about. And it's not really what I would want to do on my own car. Um, and recently Garrett released a whole new range of little turbos, a GBC range. And we've decided to try and go down that route. So their smallest one, which is the GBC 15200, supports 200 horsepower on a uh, 1.5, up to 1.5 litre engine, I think. And of course, most minis are 1275, so 1 1.3, apart from the very old, um, even, you know, uh, it, it's quite old technology, so not particularly efficient, although most of the turbo kits will probably be going on ported big valve heads, which obviously increases the efficiency somewhat. So we've, we don't really know how it's gonna perform, but the way you find out is to build a kit, throw a turbo on a car and put it on the dyno, see how it goes. First thing I've done is just set the turbo position in the engine bay. There are two ways on classic minis. You either put the turbo down the back or you mount it over the bell housing um, as a side mount. The side mount is the most convenient because it means no ch chopping of the bulkhead or anything like that. But it does mean that the manifold is a bit bigger, uh, the downpipe's a bit longer, um, and it's not so easy to route the pipework around the engine bay because obviously minis are quite small. There's pros and cons. I think side mount's the best way to go. Definitely from my opinion, when it comes to uh, like resale of a kit, it's gonna involve the least amount of custom parts to get it to fit. So it's a no brainer to go side mount. Um, I've got it in there at the minute, just off of uh, one of the water takeoffs on the cylinder head, just as a kind of bracket to get it in a welded and fixed in a rough position. And then I'm gonna start to fabricate the manifold on a block that specialist components have sent me that's on the bench. So it should be quite a simple process to, uh, to kind of get this manifold mocked up. I've already got a rough idea of what I'm gonna do with it. And then it's a case of figuring out a downpipe, um, where we're gonna mount an intercooler, which there's loads of uh, different ways you can do that, and some boost pipes and bits and bobs. So I've got the, the turbo mounted on the block that Specialist Components have sent. Um, and then the first thing I kind of did when they sent the engine was, this cylinder head has been ported out, basically as big as they ever go. Um, and they have a kind of rectangle port which is that kind of shape. Um, so obviously we want to try and make this uh, a really nice kit. So 3D printed some transition flanges to go from that larger square or rectangle port into the inch and a half primary size that we'll use on the two outside ports. Test fit that, it's good. Luckily, specialist components do all their own machining in house. So they've then machined a set of flanges um, set of uh, 316 stainless flanges for us to use. Again, so it just keeps it a, a really nice, yeah, and we talk about attention to detail and things like that. These are things that really set it apart. It's not just a laser cut, D-bird bit of stainless. It's, you know, an actual nice machined part that, you know, really does set 
what we're trying to do apart really from other things that have been done before I guess so now that I've got these flanges it's just a case of bolting them on and starting to plan out that route now obviously the mini only has three exhaust ports so the uh, center primary takes number two and three cylinders so it's actually bigger you would normally use like a bigger primary on those so that'll be um, 44 millimeters and then the two outside ones will be 38 so um, we'll have a look at how I plan on trying to kind of route that all together so as you can see I've now got some bits kind of mocked up to show you roughly how I think it's going to go again with all these things it's all about trying to keep as much efficiency as possible you want the most amount of straight lines the least amount of bends you know the, the biggest bend radiuses the cleanest merges of gas um, so that's what we're that's the you know the kind of that's that's kind of how we design these things so um, these two outside cylinders are going to come together like so and merge in the middle and that'll be uh, you know a, a really nice uh, you know two bend transition to get these together and we'll have a flex bellow I think on this side possibly on this side one or the other just so that these can kind of move independently of each other as things heat up and cool down you know that's a longevity thing um, not the kind of thing that's maybe 100% required but it doesn't hurt to have it and we can easily fit one in here and it'll just mean that you know we're not going to worry about um, these things cracking over you know years of heat cycles and then the center primary I'll use the ice engine works blocks to demonstrate this will come in something like that um, and then there'll be another small two to one merge underneath there so hopefully that gives you some idea of how this is going to work and then that'll just kind of loop around and back up here so I've got the uh, the secondary in now on these two center cylinders um, and now it's basically a case of trying to collect th those both both those secondaries now into one so that we can start rooting it back up to the turbo I've made this little collector up um, which is basically going to take us from those two inch and a half diameter primaries from the outside cylinders and then the inch and three quarter secondary from the inside cylinders into one inch and three quarter round which will then take us back up to the turbo and that slots in just under here like so so I've got the um, the kind of 180 degree bend now starting to loop us back up towards the turbo and again I'm keep, managing to keep it really tight into the block which is what we need because we need enough room for the downpipe to come down without you know any kind of issues clearing the subframe um, but with that kind of in place I've mocked up how we're going to get roughly from that up section onto the turbo and it, it's looking pretty good I think we're probably going to do this in two sections with probably a v-band to join in just to make fitting easier um, and then again we'll probably end up putting some kind of flex section in here as well there'll be a really hefty bracket holding the turbo in place we're not going to rely purely on the manifold which is why I'm able to do all this in thin wall tube but yeah so we're getting somewhere close now just in case cutting up some more bends and figuring out where we're going to put this join in so I've got that ice engine work stuff now replaced with uh, stainless again all just tacked up for now we're still a little bit rough in places it needs a little bit of refinement but you need to know where you're going before you can start to do all that refinement and start to make jigs and things like that so I'm really happy with how this has come out we're going to be able to get a, a standard engine steady straight through um, there's going to be more than enough room for the oil return and plenty of room for the downpipe because we've kept everything so tight to the block it's really nice and flowing um, you know I've not really got any tight radius bends in here or anything really minimal welds as well which is quite nice you know you don't want any more welds than you need it's just more failure points so really what we need to do now is get all this shored up start making some proper welds on things um, tighten up any gaps or clearances that we need to make sure are right we need to put a flex bellow in between the turbo and the manifold and obviously we've got to put one in on the other side as well and then get that v-band joint in which i think is going to go somewhere around the bottom of the uh the manifold obviously we need to be able to get at it so that's going to be something we have to consider um, but it will be much easier to have a, a joint in there just in terms of getting it on and off the car but we've also yeah got plenty of room for the downpipe so I'm, I'm really happy with how this has turned out once we've done those final few tweaks 
we can weld it all up try it back on the car i mean we know it's going to fit because we've got it on the engine here and we've accounted for everything like the engine steady um, and then we can start working on the downpipe and the other associated pipe work with it obviously we can now get uh, John from Specialist Components to machine up the uh, downpipe flange, which will be another um, nice transitional flange. We've got this 3D printed one of, a kind of version of that. Um, so we can get that machined in a billet, which again is a much nicer way of doing it. You can, you know, it just, just works better. Um, it's fancier and everybody likes billet stuff. So that's the plan. Get that machined, um, get a downpipe made up, Think about oil feed and return and try and find a really tiny intercooler core. So thanks for watching. Hopefully next time you see a video from us, the manifold will be welded up. We'll have a nice downpipe with it and we can start thinking about putting it in my car.